week five NFL prediction video. So last week was pretty crazy. A lot of upsets. I got a lot wrong. I barely went over 500, which is pretty sad, not going to lie. So not a good week for me. But look, it was a crazy week. A lot of upsets. I mean, did I expect the Raiders to go into Indianapolis and, and score 32 points on the Colts? Absolutely not. Did I expect the Buccaneers to go to the Los Angeles Rams and score 55 and win? Absolutely not. A lot of crazy stuff happened. Of course, I got Thursday night wrong. All that kind of stuff. So hopefully this week's better. And now let's do the week four recap. So my record last week was 8-7. and seven. As I said, not great. The record on the season now is 39-23-1. So Thursday Night Football was frustrating. I mean, I blamed that game on Matt LaFleur. I mean, they had six plays on the goal line, literally at the one-yard line, and they ran the ball once in that situation, and the game ends on a Aaron Rodgers tip ball that was intercepted. So, I mean, I don't want to say the Packers deserve to lose that game, but still, I did not like the play calling there on the one-yard line. The Titans at Falcons, I now know what I, need, what I needed to know about the Falcons. They aren't legit. They aren't who I thought they were going to be. I thought their defense would be much improved. That's not the case. Marcus Mariota went in there was throwing just easy passes to Corey Davis and A.J. Brown, and the Falcons secondary seemed like they were not interested in making plays. So, of course, they lost 24-10. to Not good. Chiefs at Lions. This game was amazing. This was a fun one to watch. The craziest play in this one, there were a couple ones. The lateral play with Travis Kelsey to LaShawn McCoy that picked up like an extra 15 yards. There was that fumble on the goal line with Kerryon Johnson, and a Chief ran it back. I think it was Brashad Breeland for 100 yards, and really no one contested him. So it was a 100-yard fumble return. A lot of crazy stuff there. Patrick Mahomes had a crazy, um, you know, uh, what is it, go-ahead drive, game-winning drive with very little time left on the clock. So they went on to win that game. The Chargers at the Dolphins. So, of course, I mean, the, the Dolphins hung around, of course, in the beginning. They had their first lead of the season, I believe, at one point. And, you know, in the second half, they did nothing offensively. So the Chargers took that one easily. Melvin Gordon didn't even see the field in that one, I believe. Patriots at Bills. With Josh Allen went down in the third quarter, I believe it was, or maybe second quarter. And really, the Patriots did not look great offensively. But we know the Bills have a great defense. But... The Patriots did enough to uh, on offense to win that game. The Bills' defense is still very legit, though. Tom Brady threw a goal line interception, and after that, the Patriots' offense really did not look the same. Raiders at Colts. So, yeah, this was the shocker of the week. I thought the Colts were going to be lifeless, especially on the road. I thought the Colts were going to be a lot better. The thing was, though, the Colts were missing their arguably their two best defenders in Darius Leonard and Malik Hooker, and that definitely hurt them in this game. The Raiders went up like 21 nothing or 14 nothing, whatever it was, very quickly with two guys I've never heard of, and um, they just pretty much coasted from there. So, I mean, the Colts made a bit of a comeback at the end, just not enough, though. Redskins at Giants. I mean, I thought the Redskins were going to give the Giants a, a fight this week. I am a Giants fan, so I was looking into this game a lot, and I thought the Redskins were going to put up a pretty uh, pretty good fight. I thought the Giants win by, like, three or four points. The Giants won 24-3, to three, so I think the Redskins right now are just spiral spiraling out of control, and who knows what's going to happen the rest of the season. The Panthers at Texans. I was disappointed with the Texans once again. I mean, Kyle Allen fumbled the ball and lost three fumbles in this game, and somehow the Panthers still won. Don't know what happened there. Browns at Ravens. The Browns finally had themselves a great game. I mean, this is kind of what people expected before the season. Nick Chubb had three touchdowns. I believe he had an 86, 88-yard touchdown run, whatever it was. Odell Beckham did not do much in this game, but definitely was a distraction. Jarvis Landry had a huge game in this one. And finally, the, the Browns defense looked pretty good. I mean, don't be fooled by the 25 points they gave up. I think they gave up a touchdown on the very last play to Willie Sneed, which was like a garbage time touchdown. So basically, they held them to like 18 points. Next, we have the Seahawks at Ravens. So, or not, Seahawks at Cardinals. Um, once again, the Cardinals just not looking great offensively. And the Seahawks, I mean, Russell Wilson's had a great year, phenomenal year so far. People talk about, you know, who's the next guy in the MVP race. I think it should be Russell Wilson. I mean, we, we all know it's Patrick Mahomes right now, but people bring up Dak Prescott, Lamar Jackson still. I think Russell Wilson has to be in the conversation. He's been great this year. Uh, Buccaneers at Rams. So, yeah, this one was crazy as well. Jared Goff must have had like 50 turnovers in this game. Once again, the Bucks or the uh, Rams running game does not look great. I think Todd Gurley had a couple of touchdowns in this game, but was inefficient on the ground. And, and Jared Goff has had too many turnovers. I just, you know, it's, it just happens too much at this point. Jaguars at Broncos. This was a fun game. Leonard Fournette had like 215 yards or something on the ground. Gardner Minshew made a crazy play on the in the end zone and threw a touchdown to Raquel Armstead. I think his name is. I mean, he made five defenders miss in, in the pocket somehow. I don't know. Gardner Minshew does some crazy stuff.
Vikings at Bears, I mean, you know, Kirk Cousins played a terrible game. I think the Vikings had like 85 total offensive yards after the third quarter. You're not going to win games in the NFL like that. I think Mitch Trubisky went down in this game. He His uh, season might be over, some people are saying, but some are saying he might be back as soon as next week, so I really don't know. I mean, it doesn't really make a difference to me. Chase Daniels, fine. The Bears went on to win that game 16-6, to I believe. Cowboys at Saints, a very low-scoring game. Saints played really good defense in this one. Dak Prescott, his top receiver, wasn't getting open. Zeke fumbled. Jason Witten fumbled. The Saints played great defense, and you know Teddy Bridgewater did enough. He was conservative, but he did enough to win them that game. Bengals at Steelers, complete crap show. I mean, uh, the Steelers running backs had eight receptions each. Mason Rudolph threw like one ball down the field, and it happened to be a long touchdown to Deontay Johnson. So yeah, I'm not buying into the Steelers just because they won a game. I mean, you know, by a lot of points, I'm not a believer in the Bengals. So yeah, I think this it's a game they should have won. They won by a lot, but really, I think it was more the Bengals just looking terrible. So that's it. A lot of uh, surprising games there. I would say it was a fun week overall. Not a fun week for my bank account in terms of betting on the NFL games, but still, I mean, it is what it is. This is a new week and hopefully I do better. So now, let's get into week five. For Thursday Night Football this week, we have the Los Angeles Rams at the Seattle Seahawks. Both teams are 3-1, and one, and Seattle is favored by a point and a half. That makes sense to me. The Rams did not look great at all last week. Gave up 55 points. I mean, they did give up two defensive touchdowns, so that's not all the Rams' defense right there. Some of it was Jared Goff. But still, they did not look great defensively either. They had no interest in guarding uh, Chris Godwin in that game. Mike Evans had some big plays as well. Even the uh, running backs for the Tampa Bay Bucks had a nice game on the ground. So still, I mean, their defense, I mean, who knows what's going to happen this game. It's a short week for both teams, obviously. The Rams have had some defensive struggles this year. I can't I can't put it lightly. I mean, you know, week one, they gave up like 28 points to uh, Cam Newton and the, uh, and the Panthers. I forget. They played the Browns. They held them to a decent amount of points, but still, they almost lost that game as well. So, I mean, they've they've struggled this year, the Rams. I mean, they're, they're lucky to be 3-1 and one at this point. Russell Wilson's been playing at an MVP level, as I said. Zero interceptions so far. Eight touchdowns, I believe. Chris Carson, hopefully, can get it going with the running game. He looked a lot better last week, but that was against Arizona's run defense, which we know isn't great. So, we'll see what he does against a what we think is a better defense in the Los Angeles Rams. So, I don't know. I just think Jared Goff and his, you know, being prone for turnovers compared to Russell Wilson, who's very safe with the ball. I mean, he's not a conservative quarterback, but still, Russell Wilson does not throw many turnovers or fumble the ball much as compared to Jared Goff. I mean, I think I saw a stat that Jared Goff has led the NFL in turnovers from a certain point last year. So, look, I mean, it's definitely something that's going to lose this game for them if Jared Goff continues to turn over the football. And I think Jared Goff is, like, the highest paid player in the NFL for next year or most guaranteed money or something like that. That is a tough spot to be in. I mean, to have him, Todd Gurley locked up. I mean, Todd Gurley does not look anything like his former self, which sucks. You obviously can't predict the whole arthritis thing but still it just sucks for the Rams and they looked like a very bright team a year ago but who knows what's going to happen with them but for now in week five I'm going to go with the Seahawks I think they'll win a close game and um, I don't know if I would bet this game but I guess I would pick the Seahawks it's basically a pick I'm only one and a half points I guess I would take Seattle for betting lines and to win the game outright on to the Sunday games and this first one is probably a you know two teams that are not going to make the playoffs this year but still has the potential to be somewhat of a fun game it's the Arizona Cardinals who are 0-3 and 1 is it 0-2 no 0-3 and 1 I think it is yeah four weeks makes sense um against the 0-4 Cincinnati Bengals the Bengals are favored by three points coming off that very bad loss against the Steelers on Monday Night Football Honestly, I really want to bet the Bengals in this game. I mean, for some reason, I feel like most people are going to be on the Cardinals because we all watched Cincinnati play on Monday. They look terrible, but still, I mean, look, John Ross went on IR. It's not looking good for them. A.J. Green's still out. But for some reason, I feel like the Bengals are going to cover the three points in this game. Arizona is missing Christian Kirk, so you take out one weapon from one side and run from the other. And Christian Kirk is probably their highest targeted receiver this year, unless it's Larry Fitzgerald. I mean, it's definitely one of those two guys. I mean, they definitely relied on Christian Kirk a lot this year. He injured his ankle on like one of the final plays of the game, so not a good look for my fantasy team. But still, it is what it is. Obviously, you know, Cincinnati got blown out. 
Pittsburgh, um, the pass rush for Pittsburgh is a lot better than Arizona's pass rush, so it's not like Andy Dalton's going to be knocked down eight times in this game like he was on Monday night. So that'll be better for them, and I think it's a get-right game for Joe Mixon, who hasn't really had a monster game yet this year. We know Joe Mixon's very talented, and I think I think against his run defense of Arizona, which has not been great for you know the last few years now, I think he'll have a good game for himself here. I understand the Cincinnati offensive line's not great, neither is Arizona's, but still, I think you know at least. Joe Mixon will have a good game in this one. I think they'll control the game on the ground. I like Zach Taylor. I mean, I like both offensive minds in this game. I think they're both creative and, and do the most they can with the talent they have. But still, I, I do think the Bengals win this game. They are home, and Arizona has, you know, they've they definitely have had too many turnovers at some points, and Kyler Murray still making rookie mistakes and taking way too many sacks and all that kind of stuff. So if Cincinnati can get some kind of pressure in this game, that'll help as well. But I do think Cincinnati does win this game. Also would not shock me if Arizona won this game, but I am going to go with Cincinnati. Next game, we have the Buffalo Bills at 3-1 and one against the 2-2 two and two Tennessee Titans. The Titans are favored by three right now. We are not sure who's going to be the quarterback of the Bills, but I guess the line doesn't really matter either way because it's still minus three. So, Buffalo had a 16-10 loss versus New England, and I think their defense played very well in that one. Josh Allen got knocked out halfway through the game, something like that, and their defense still played really well. I mean, the Patriots went up pretty early in this one. Looked like they were going to have a commanding lead, and then Brady threw a goal line interception, and the Bills defense played great from there on out, and Brady did not look great. Same with the rushing attack for um, New England, and Tennessee had a dominating victory at Atlanta. They only scored 24 points, but held them to 10. Both defenses are very good. Now you put Matt Bitcoin Barkley. If you don't know the story behind that, I believe Matt Barkley wanted his contract to be in Bitcoin. That's why I said that. And it's just a pretty gross matchup. I mean, I'm not looking forward to this by any means. I'm probably not going to tune into it too much. I like watching Josh Allen. He's fun. But if Josh Allen's out in this game, probably won't be tuning into this one too much. So who knows what's going to happen. It'll be low scoring. It'll be a defensive battle. I honestly have no idea. I'm still going to go with the Bills, though. I feel like they're the better team. I like the Titans' defense. I know they're home, but I still think the Bills have a better defense. I don't know how you know the Bills are going to move the ball or how Tennessee is going to move the ball for that matter. Maybe a special teams play as the decider in this one. I don't know. It'll be an ugly game. If you're a fan of these teams, I mean, you're going to watch it either way, but I definitely will try I'll be trying not to watch this game. I'm sure it won't turn up on red zone too much, but we'll see. I mean, crazy things happen. I mean, the Raiders scored 32 last week, so who knows? Maybe this is a 42 to like 39 game or something like that. Who knows? But um, I think in most most likely case, it will be low scoring. And for some reason, I'm going to go with the Bills regardless of who plays at quarterback. Next, we have what I believe is the first London game of 2019. It's the Chicago Bears at the Oakland Raiders, I guess you can say. I mean, the Raiders are the home team technically in this one, but they are in London, as I said, so who really cares? Bears are 3-1. and one. The Raiders are 2-2 two and two, coming off a big win against Indy. The Bears coming off a division win against the Minneapolis, or I was going to say Minneapolis Colts. That is not a team. Minnesota Vikings, my God. Um, but I really think the Bears are going to win this game. I mean, of course, Oakland looked really good in that game on Sunday against Indianapolis, but I'm not buying in completely. I still think Derek Carr is nothing great. I think Khalil Mack going to have one of those revenge games where he gets at least a couple of sacks in this one. Chicago's defense just overwhelming. I don't know how they're going to move the ball in this one. Look, Kurt Cousins is not a great quarterback quarterback by any means but is Derek Carr any better I mean I don't think so personally they have less weapons the Raiders don't have themselves at this uh Stephon Diggs or an Adam Thielen they have Tyra Williams Darren Waller's been a nice surprise Josh Jacobs if he even plays in this one I don't know I just feel like they don't have enough offensive firepower I understand Chase Daniels probably going to start for uh, the Bears in this one but I think they'll be fine I think their offensive line is going to open up enough holes for David Montgomery or Tariq Cohn who's ever running the ball there I think this is finally the game where David Montgomery has a big game, their third-round rookie running back, and you know finally just has himself a nice game. I think it's it's definitely coming at some point. He had like 23 carries at one point. I don't know if it was last week or the week before that, but he was pretty inefficient in that game. But I think this is the one where he gets on track. We know the Raiders don't have a fantastic defense by any means. So I am going to go with the Chicago Bears. It won't be too high scoring in my opinion. I think the Bears win this one by probably like four to seven points. I would say it's probably somewhere in the teens, maybe like a 17-14 type of victory, a 21 or a 20-14 to 14 type of victory, something like that. So, look, wouldn't surprise me if it went the Raiders way either, but I think the Bears defense is too good right now. So I'll take them over the Oakland Raiders in London. 
The Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 2-2 two two go to the 3-1 and one New Orleans Saints. This came in New Orleans, obviously. And, you know, Tampa Bay coming off a 55-40 victory at the defending NFC Championships, or champions, <laughs> Los Angeles Rams. And it's a very impressive win. I mean, they had two defensive touchdowns. They were getting to Jared Goff, forcing him to make mistakes. And Dominic and Sue had, like, a fumble return for a touchdown. All that kind of stuff. Everyone was getting involved there, whether it was Chris Godwin or Mike Evans. Even Ronald Jones is getting involved in, uh, in the running game. So, yeah, I was impressed with the Buccaneers, but I'm not going to be fooled by this. I mean, I, I do like Bruce Arians and his offenses. Right now, the Bucs are fourth in the NFL in points per game, but their defense has not been great in points per game. They've given up the third most points in the NFL, I believe. So, it's an issue for them defensively. And, and Teddy Bridgewater is not the type of quarterback who's going to put up 400 yards and four touchdowns on you. But he's not going to make mistakes either. Teddy Bridgewater is not going to lose a game for you. I think he'll do enough. They have a good running game, obviously, with Alvin Kamara, Latavius Murray, depending on how much they use him. And I think they'll be fine. I, I think the Saints win this game by like four points to seven points. I don't expect a blowout either way, but we'll see. Maybe Jameis Winston starts throwing turnovers again. I don't know. I mean, I like Jameis Winston. I root for the guys, so we'll see what happens. I just think, you know, especially with the Saints defense, they looked very, very impressive against a pretty good Dallas offense on Sunday night. So I think based off how good their defense looked and stuff like that, I'm going to go with the Saints in this game. Next, we have the Minnesota Vikings at my New York Giants. The Vikings are favored by five and a half points coming off a 16-6 loss at Chicago. And I'll be honest, new newsflash here. The Giants defense is not as good as the Bears defense. I mean, I think we should know that. Obviously, the Giants coming off a pretty comfortable win against Washington. I mean, they're a mess right now, so I mean, it's not the most impressive win, but the Giants did what they had to do in that game. And honestly, this is Daniel Jones' first real test. I mean, he played the Buccaneers defense, which, as I just mentioned, is giving up the third most points in the NFL. I mean, look, their front seven I've always liked for the Bucs. I think it's pretty good, but their secondary is really not that good. Um, you know, he's played the, the Redskins defense, which is a mess right now. And, you know, now he plays the, the Vikings defense, which is one of the better ones in football. Easily top ten. You can argue it's top five. And uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I mean, we should definitely see a lot of targets for Adam Thielen, Stephon Diggs. Of course, there's a bunch of Stephon Diggs trade rumors. Even Giants fans are talking about it. I mean, I don't want Stephon Diggs. I feel like we don't need him right now. But, um... Yeah, Adam Thielen's going to be fed the ball a lot in this game, so that concerns me because the Giants have had some issues at cornerback. Janoris Jenkins bounced back in a big in a big way last week. I think he won Defensive Player of the Week in the NFC, so good for him. But obviously, Adam Thielen's a lot different than Paul Richardson or whoever the top receiver was on Washington. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Dalvin Cook bounced back, so Dalvin Cook really was getting no running lanes against the Bears defense. They really just zeroed in on him and just made Kirk Cousins beat them, and it worked to perfection for the Bears defense. I think Dalvin Cook has a nice bounce back here. The Giants run defense is better than their pass defense, but still I think Dalvin Cook's going to have a good game in this one. Minnesota is 0-2 on the road. They're a much different team on the road than they are at home, so that's the one thing you got to worry about. I mean, Minnesota has beat the crap out of teams at home this year, whether it was week one against the Falcons, and then I think it was week three against the Oakland Raiders. So, I mean, yeah, the Falcons have sucked this year. The Raiders just had an impressive victory, but still, I don't think they're all that great overall. And uh, Golden Tate coming back from a uh, four-game suspension makes his uh, Giants regular season debut in this game, so we'll see how much he plays. I'm sure he'll be their regular slot receiver with Sterling Shepard on the outside. The question is, who is the third receiver for the Giants? So we'll find out in this game. Look, I mean, I don't know. I feel like the Vikings will win this game. I think they're just going to, you know, feed these receivers. The Giants' secondary is just not good enough. The Giants' defense has looked better, but I think right now, I mean, I just for some reason, I think Dalvin Cook, these weapons are just going to go off in this game. The Giants will put up some points most likely. Daniel Jones is fine, but I think the Vikings win a pretty high-scoring game in this one. Next is the other New York team, the New York Jets at 0-3 against the 2-2 Philadelphia Eagles. The Jets coming off the bye, of course. Philadelphia coming off a thrilling Thursday night victory at Lambeau Field. I'm sure we all watched that game. And look, I mean, is Sam Darnold in or out? That's really the main question right here. If he's out, I think Philly wins this game. It just really depends by how much. 
Um, it's a perfect matchup for Philadelphia. I mean, the thing is with Philly, their run defense is really good. Their pass defense, really bad. But if Luke Falk is the starting quarterback, it doesn't matter. I mean, who is Luke Falk and can he even pass the ball downfield? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I understand that their secondary for the Eagles has sucked this year. But this is just not a good matchup for the Jets. And I mean, I just don't know how they win this game if Sam Darnold is not playing. I mean, they can give the ball to Le'Veon Bell 25 times. But how many yards does he get? Like 50 on the ground? I mean, still, it's not going to be an efficient game for him. That's why I put Kenny be efficient. I don't think so. And it's just a terrible situation for the Jets. They have a rough schedule. They're coming off the bye. The Eagles have a mini bye, so that's really not fair for them either way. And as I said earlier, I think the Jets started out 0-6 this year based on how their schedule goes. We'll see if they can just regroup in the second half of the season and rattle off some victories. But for right now, it's not looking good. Sam Darnold looks like he's pushing the play, but obviously the Jets won't push it. The guy's 21, 22 years old. They're not going to risk a spleen injury for him with the mono situation. So we'll see. I mean, if I'm the Jets, I'd probably hold him out. There's no point in risking it they probably don't win this game either way but look I mean I, I just think the Eagles win this game I mean I don't know about how many points though I mean the 13 and a half point spread is interesting you're basically saying can the Eagles win this game by at least two touchdowns I'd be very tempted to bet that for the Eagles if Luke Falk was definitely starting if I found out he was starting I'd probably bet the Eagles in this game but I'm not too confident in it I mean 13 and a half points is a lot but we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe the Eagles, you know, are slow on offense in this game. I don't know. It's not like the Jets' defense is total crap. I mean, their offense obviously is, but their defense might be up for the task. We'll see. Of course, they're coming off a bye. They've had two weeks to prep for this game, so maybe the Jets surprise us on defense, but I really don't expect much on offense. So, I mean, you know, next week for the Jets, they probably get Darnold back. They get Chris Herndon back. They'll, you know, they go, they get Robbie Anderson at full strength. I don't know. If, I think Robbie Anderson hasn't been injured. For some reason, I feel like he's been injured. Um, Quincy Nui was not coming back, but I mean, the Jets are only going to go up from here at this point. I mean, they get some defenders back who have been injured as well. So it'll get better for the Jets. But right now, I'm just not expecting them to win this game. So give me the Eagles in this one. Next is an AFC North matchup. The 2-2 two two Baltimore Ravens against the 1-3 Pittsburgh Steelers. The Ravens have lost their last two games. They're coming off a 40-25 loss against Cleveland at home. So that was not good for them. A lot of people thought the Ravens would win that game, myself included. And Pittsburgh coming off a commanding 27-3 win against Cincinnati on Monday Night Football. So how good is Baltimore's defense? I mean, you know, over the offseason, a lot of their front seven left. They did add Earl Thomas to the secondary, but Zadarius Smith and uh, Terrell Suggs and some other guys left as well. So how good is that front seven? They're not really creating much pressure right now. And that is key for defense, obviously. So the Steelers are coming off an eight-sack performance, but that's against Cincinnati's offensive line. Of course, the Ravens have a better offensive line than the Cincinnati Bengals, so I do not expect a, a back-to-back eight-sack performance for the Steelers' uh, defense. Uh, the health of Juju and Connor, so Juju Smith-Schuster and James Connor have injuries right now. Not sure how severe they are. I think James Connor is going to play. Juju, I'm not so sure on. I forget what his injury was. I think it's a toe injury or something like that, so you never know with this kind of stuff. And the Rudolph offense, so yeah, the Steelers had 16 receptions in that game to their running backs. I believe um, Mason Rudolph had like one deep completion in that game to Deontay Johnson. So look, I don't know how that offense lasts in the NFL. I mean, you can get away with it against a team like the Bengals, but against the Baltimore Ravens, who look, they aren't the best defense. They aren't what they used to be, but they're better than the Bengals. I don't know how this works back-to-back weeks now that they have tape on it. I don't know why Baltimore is only a three and a half point favorite. I am definitely going to pound the Ravens in this game, and I probably should bet this right now because it's probably going to go up. But yeah, I think the Ravens are a lot better than three and a half points compared to the Steelers. The Steelers are home, so that helps, but still, I feel like they're much better. This is a get-right game for Lamar Jackson. I think Marquise Brown has a couple really big plays in this one. Maybe Mark Andrews gets involved as well. So yeah, I think it'll be a nice game for them. We'll see if the Baltimore offensive line can hold up, and as long as they do, I think they'll be fine. So I don't think the Steelers have much of a chance in this one. And uh, if the Steelers won this game, I'd be pretty shocked, honestly. So I will take the Ravens, and I think they win this game by at least a touchdown. The 1-3 Atlanta Falcons go to the 2-2 two two Houston Texans. I obviously have no feel for either of these teams. I feel like I picked them to win every week, and they have five combined losses, so that's not good for me. I mean, the Texans had that great win against the Chargers in San, or not San Diego, in Los Angeles, and you think to yourself, all right, here we go. Here, here's the real Texans, and they go and score 10 points against the Panthers and look like complete garbage. And then you have the Falcons against the 
Uh, the Titans, they scored 10 points, I believe, as well, and it was 24-10. The Falcons were playing no defense in that game. Every time I turned on that game, Marcus Mariota, bang, 15 yards, you know, 25 yards, 50-yard touchdown. There was just no defense being played by Atlanta in this game. I mean, Atlanta's had a rough season. Matt Ryan's looked bad. Their defense has looked bad. Calvin Ridley's looked bad. Devonta Freeman's looked bad. I mean, nothing has been really going well for this team. And I don't know how bad it's going to get. I think Dan Quinn has a chance to be the first coach fired this year. I do think it's Jay Gruden in Washington. But, I mean, he's a sleeper pick to be the first coach fired. I tweeted about this earlier today, actually. I think he has a chance to be fired first. They had a rough year last year in Atlanta. Obviously, a lot of it was due to injuries. But they've had a lot of their guys back healthy this year. And it really has not looked much better. I understand Keanu Neal's hurt once again. He's a big piece of their defense. But for the most part, those guys are healthy and just not performing well. I mean, Matt Ryan's had an off year as well. We should know that. He's had a lot of turnovers as compared to last year. And a loss here could end Atlanta's season, at least for their playoff hopes. I'm not saying their entire season's over. They're just not going to stop playing. But I think their hopes for winning the division are probably over. So if the Saints win and go 4-1 and one, and the Falcons go 1-4, and four, look, I mean, I think their chances of winning the division are probably over. So it's tough to come back from 1-4. and four. I think the Texans win this game. I think DeAndre Hopkins goes off in this game. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I think they'll be fine offensively. This will be a, a pretty big shootout game, in my opinion, and we'll just see who scores the most points. I mean, I don't like either of these defenses, to be honest with you. They concern me, but, you know, we'll see which offensive line holds up better. But I feel like right now I just, I just feel like the Falcons – are just not going to be able to keep up with the Texans offensively, so I'm going to go with the Texans. They win a shootout in this one. I, I feel like it's going to be a like a 31-28 type of score or something like that, so I don't know if I'd bet the minus 5, but I'm going to take the Texans to win this game. The 2-2 two two Jacksonville Jaguars visit the 2-2 two two Carolina Panthers. Panthers are favored by 3.5 points in this one. Jacksonville coming off a thrilling victory at Denver 26-24. Carolina coming off that win against the Texans that I just talked about. Somehow Kyle Allen fumbled the ball three times and they still won. Don't know how it happened, but it did. Carolina's defense has played very well, though, especially the last two games. Um, they've been getting a ton of sacks. I understand they played Arizona's offensive line and Houston's offensive line, which aren't very good, but still, they're getting to the quarterback. Can they do it in this game? Jacksonville's offensive line is pretty average for the most part, so they have a chance to do it once again. Uh, Garner Minshew, how long does the magic last? We saw some of it last week. He had that amazing touchdown I talked about in the beginning where he just you know, basically eluded every defensive lineman and threw a touchdown touchdown to an open Raquel Armstead in the back of the end zone. Um, Leonard Fournette went off last week for like 215 rushing yards. Don't expect that again, but he will be fed a lot in this game, I'm sure. So we'll see. Christian McCaffrey against Fournette should be fun to watch. Um, I don't know. I just feel like the Panthers have more weapons offensively. The Panthers defense is very hot right now. They're coming home after two road games. So I think they'll win this game, but it wouldn't shock me if Jacksonville won either. But I do like the Panthers in this one for some reason. I'm going to pick them. As I said, I'm not too confident in it. We'll see how long this Kyle Allen run lasts, and we'll see how long this Gardner Minshew run lasts. Does Cam Newton get his job back when he's ready to come back? Who knows? I mean, Kyle Allen needs to keep playing well, and so far I think the Panthers are 2-0 under him, so we'll see what happens. So going to go with the Panthers in this one. Probably wouldn't bet it, but going to pick them to win this game outright. So next we have a 4-0 New England Patriots against the 0-4 Washington Redskins. So the Patriots are a minus 15 in this one. I actually bet this one right out the gate. I think it, at the time I bet it, it was like 14 and a half or something like that. Look, I mean, the Redskins are a team that I said before, they are spiraling out of control. Don't know if they, if the coach head, uh, head coach Jay Gruden has controlled his team anymore. Their secondary looks terrible. They're not getting any pressure. Um, even their offense, they're missing weapons. I mean, I don't know if Terry McLaurin is going to play yet in this game. Jordan Reed has not played a snap yet this year in the regular season. So I think the Re uh, the Patriots win this one very comfortably. The Redskins have yet to allow a passing touchdown in, this, in the season yet. I have no idea who starts a quarterback for Washington. Washington. I feel like it won't be Haskins. I don't think they'll throw him out there against the Patriots. It seemed like Jay Gruden did not want to play him anyway. Um, Case Keenum did not look good last week. And then, of course, Colt McCoy can come back and play as well. So we'll see what happens there. Um, the Pat schedule must be nice to have that. They've had some very easy games to start the season so far. They've played the Jets, the Dolphins, 
forget who they opened the season with. Oh, the Steelers, who they beat the crap out of. I mean, the Steelers aren't the worst team in the world, but still. I feel like the Patriots have not had much of a challenge yet. Of course, last week was a decent game. The Bills put up a good fight defensively, but Josh Allen was knocked out of that game. So, still, the Patriots have had a nice schedule so far to start the season. So, I did bet the Patriots at minus 15 or whatever it was. So, I do think they'll win this game by at least 17 points. Look, I mean, no one's able to score on this New England defense. It's just the way that it's been so far. And, and so far, Washington has not really done much offensively. Offensively, Washington cannot run the ball for their lives. And if you want to pass the ball on Jason McCourty and uh, who's the other great corner that that's that's escaping my mind right now, um, used to play for the Buffalo Bills. It'll come to me in a second. For some reason, I'm not getting this. This oh, Stephon Gilmore. Wow, that was pretty sad. How long that took. But yeah. It's going to be tough for them to pass on this team. I just don't expect them to put up many points at all. I don't know how Washington scores in this game if unless it's like one of those fluky uh, special team touchdowns like the Jets game a couple weeks ago. So I don't know. I think the Patriots win this game by a lot, probably at least 17 in my mind. So if you can get them at a, uh, at a, a good bet, like a, a minus 17 or below, I would bet the Patriots for sure. So we'll see what happens. I think the Pats go 5-0. and Washington's probably going to go to 0-5. Next is the 0-4 Denver Broncos going to Los Angeles to play, I almost said the Clippers, the Chargers. So they are a minus 6.5 according to most sports books, so I'll go with that. It's a decent number, I guess. I would pick the Chargers if I was betting on this. Um, you know, the Chargers do have some injuries, but I mean the Broncos, while they are competitive in every game it seems like, I just feel like the Chargers are a lot better and they're at home. So Denver coming off a 24-26 loss against Jacksonville. I mean, look, as I said, Denver's had some tough losses this year. You think back to the Bears game, which I think was week two, even last week. Um, the week before in Green Bay, they kind of hung around with them as well. Week one, I mean, they kind of got blown out. So for the most part, they've been hanging around in most of their games. They just lost Bradley Chubb to a torn ACL, so they won't see him the rest of 2019. Right now, for the Chargers, there are some injuries as well. I mean, they do have uh, wide receiver injuries to Mike Williams. Their backup, Dontrell Inman, got hurt. I think Travis Benjamin's hurt. So, I mean, outside of Keenan Allen, there's not many healthy bodies. We know Hunter Henry's been out for a while, and he'll still be out for at least the next few weeks. Um, you know, right now, the Broncos have two really good wide receivers, and the, the Chargers have one really good corner. So, I mean, does a second corner step up for the Chargers? Who knows? Seems like... Um, Sanders is going to be in the slot, obviously. I feel like Sutton is going to face Hayward most of the game, so maybe Emmanuel Sanders has a big game in this one. Melvin Ingram, the great pass rusher for the Chargers, has a hamstring injury, might not play in this game. Melvin Gordon probably makes his uh, regular season debut or his 2019 debut for that matter. Um, Chargers coming off a, a commanding a 30-10 a to 10 win at Miami. As I said, that game was pretty close in the first quarter, but outside of that, the Chargers just beat them up. Austin Eckler once again had a monster game. So, yeah, the Chargers win this game in my mind. I think they win by at least seven, so I'd probably bet the Chargers if I had to, but I'm not, like, running the bet this one. So, look, it sucks for the Broncos. They're in a bad spot. Joe Flacco has looked average the whole season, basically. Um... You know, we'll see when Drew Locke gets his shot. I'm a Drew Locke fan. I liked him in college, so hopefully he plays sooner rather than later. But he is a quarterback that needs some time to develop, so maybe they sit him for the whole year. I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, it's a get-right game for the Chargers. I mean, they go 3-2 and two after this, and they need to compete with the, uh, the Chiefs, obviously, who have yet to lose this year, so they need to keep up. They can't lose a game like this, so hopefully for the Chargers' sake, they win this game. And look, Denver's going to be in the running for the first pick next year, it seems like. Obviously, the Miami Dolphins have a stranglehold on that. The Redskins are up there as well. But it seems like Denver is going to be at least in the top 10, maybe even flirt with the top 5. We'll see how it goes. Of course, losing Bradley Chubb is not good for them. And um, I still like Denver's running backs, but you know, there's really not much going on for that offense right now. I mean, uh, Emmanuel Sanders has had a nice year. Same with Sutton, but Joe Flacco hasn't been too impressive either. So I have no idea what their ceiling is offensively or even as a team, but I think for this game at least, the Chargers do win this one pretty comfortably. So there's only two 4 o'clock games this week, and luckily we have a good one here. The Green Bay Packers at 3-1 and one against the 3-1 and one Dallas Cowboys. So these, these matchups are always great. They had that awesome playoff game a few years ago. I mean, every game between these two teams seems to be great. There was a 2017 game before Rodgers broke his collarbone. That was great as well. 
They had a final win, like a, a comeback victory to Devontae Adams for a game-winning touchdown. So Green Bay coming off that Thursday night loss. They have extended rest in this one. Dallas coming off the Sunday night loss against New Orleans. No Devontae Adams probably in this game. Has a turf toe injury, I believe. So they'll be, out, be without their best weapon in Green Bay. That obviously hurts a lot. Can the Packers run D stop Zeke? So we saw the Packers run D. Their pass D has been really good this year, but their run D... Look, has not been great. I mean, you know, we we think back to Jordan Howard last week, who just had a phenomenal game. Even um even Sanders, what's his first name? Miles Sanders had a nice game on the ground as well. So can they stop Ezekiel Elliott? I really don't know. I mean, Dallas has a phenomenal offensive line. So do the Eagles from last week. I mean, these are probably two of the top three um, offensive lines in football that Green Bay has to play back to back. So I see. I think Zeke's gonna have a really nice game in this one. I think he'll have like 120 rushing yards. Probably have an efficient game. Maybe a touchdown as well so if you have him in fantasy football obviously start up Ezekiel Elliott I think he'll, he'll probably go off in this one um, Randall Cobb coming back to play his former team so a, re- a revenge game for him Aaron Rodgers is 3-0 at AT&T Stadium ever since it opened up in 2009 I believe it was um, he's 3-0 and there including a playoff victory as we all know and which Green Bay receiver steps up so of course they have Marquez Valdez Scantling um, who had a good game two weeks ago Geronimo Allison who had a touchdown last week Jimmy Graham had a good week one and a good week four did nothing weeks two and three so seems like a a hit or miss for Jimmy Graham but I'm sure he'll be more involved with these injuries um so yeah I don't know if they have enough firepower now offensively I had questions about the Packers offense coming into Thursday they put up a lot of points but obviously the Phillies uh secondary is not good at all Dallas has a good defense overall so it's going to be a tough task for them I probably wouldn't bet this game. I feel like if it was two and a half, I'd probably bet the Cowboys, but I feel like this could be a field goal game, so I'm going to pick the Cowboys outright, but if I was betting on this, I might pick the Packers. I don't know. I I, I feel like the Packers might have a tough time offensively. They're going to have a tough time stopping Ezekiel Elliott, so we'll see how many points the Cowboys can put up. They need to bounce back offensively after putting up only 10 points in New Orleans. But, um, you know, they have a tough defense in New Orleans. But so do the Packers, so this won't be easy for them. But they are home this time. They seem to be much better at home than the Cowboys, so that'll help. And uh, I do think they win this game. They're going 4-1 and on the season. Sunday night football this week is the Indianapolis Colts at the Kansas City Chiefs. The Colts are now 2-2 two and two on the season. The Chiefs remain undefeated with a great win against the uh, Lions, who have played very well, in my opinion. They're on the bye this week, the Lions, but I want to give them a shout-out real quick. They have played much better than I expected this year. Obviously, Matt Stafford's back was hurting him a lot last year. He looks a lot better this year. I've always been a Matt Stafford fan, so I'm happy he's playing well this year and looks to be healthy. So... Um, Indianapolis coming off that disappointing loss. They should be 3-1 and one right now. This loss hurts a lot because, I mean, they'll probably go 2-3 and three after this game. I don't think any of us expect the Colts to go into KC on Sunday night and win that game. They'll be more competitive. I mean, it depends who plays because, as I have listed on the bottom here, a lot of guys can miss this game. T.Y. Hilton's not looking good to play. Um, Paris Campbell's not looking good to play. Malik Hooker on defense. Marlon Mack, I think Marlon Mack should play. Darius Leonard should play, but you never know. I mean, it's con- it's a concussion, I believe. For the Chiefs, Tyreek Hill is practicing now, so he was expected to be out longer, but he's already practicing, so we'll see if he gets in um, any full practices or not. KC's defense is still a concern, obviously. They give up a lot of points to um, the Lions. Their run defense has been pretty bad this year, so if they have Marlon Mack, that'd be a big help for the Colts. And Patrick Mahomes, I mean, you can argue that was his best performance in the NFL between the rushing yards, the leadership, and the poise he showed in that game to come back and and win it late. Obviously, last year's AFC Championship game, he was phenomenal, Patrick Mahomes. But still, I think, you know, from start to finish, that might have been his best game in the NFL. I mean, you could argue it, of course. Um, It was a very nice win and a a nice game for him. So, KC's defense needs to be better. I'm sure the Colts will be able to put up points on the board. It would definitely help if T.Y. Hilton was there, if Marlon Mack was there, if Paris Campbell was there. And behind them, you have, like, Jordan Wilkins and even um, even Devin Funches is out for the season. So I have no idea who the Colts have anymore. I mean, Deion Kane is there in his second year. I mean, they don't have too many bodies after that. They still have their tight ends, Eric Ebron, Jack Doyle, so that'll help. But I don't know. I feel like the Chiefs might win this game by a lot or it'll be close. I don't think the, I don't think the Colts win this one anyway, but... There is a scenario where the Colts maybe lose by three or four, or the Colt or the Chiefs win by twenty one or something like that. I have no idea which way it's gonna go, but I think the Chiefs win this game regardless. Monday night football this week is the two and two Cleveland Browns at the still undefeated San Francisco 49ers coming off a of bye. Cleveland had the impressive win to go into first place in the AFC North. 
uh, against Baltimore, who was the leader at the time. And look, I'm having flashbacks to week two because not good flashbacks either, because in the beginning of week two against the when the 49ers played the Bengals, I first had the 49ers winning that game. For some reason, I changed my mind at the last minute and then put the Bengals who ended up losing that game by like 30 points. Then this game, I had the 49ers picked first and I had a last-minute change to Cleveland. So this is the second time I've made a last-minute switch off of the 49ers. We'll see if I pay for it again. But for some reason, I feel like Cleveland's going to win this game. They probably have a lot of momentum after last week. I understand that the Niners have had two weeks to prep for this game. They are home. That helps a lot. They are three-and-a-half-point favorites in this game. But I don't know. I mean, how legit is their defense? I mean, they played the Buccaneers. They played uh, – who would they play week three? Um – now I can't think of it, of course. Uh, they had a pretty commanding lead, though. I don't know. I forget who they played now. But week two, obviously, I just talked about the Bengals. So I forget who the Niners played week three at the moment. But anyway, I mean, Jarvis Landry has a concussion. It seems like he's going to play, though. He says he feels fine, but you never know with concussions. Cleveland's secondary is injured, but they are getting healthy. I mean, they had a lot of guys missing in that Rams game a couple weeks ago, but their secondary is getting back to full strength. Um, if I was them, I'd force Jimmy Garoppolo to beat them. I I mean, I understand that Cleveland, as I said, their secondary is banged up, but it is getting better. Um, the thing is, though, Cleveland's defensive line is really good. I, I'm a fan of them. I've been a fan of them the whole season. Um, they have a bunch of guys on the defensive line that can get to the quarterback. So, look, I mean, make, make Garoppolo drop back to pass and, and try to give the offensive line uh, a run of their money. I mean, like, obviously, Joe Staley, their left tackle, I believe, is still out. So their best offensive lineman is missing for the 49ers. And, you know, neither of these offensive lines are great. Um, Cleveland's looked, looked much better last week. But the Niners offensive line might struggle in this game. We'll see. I mean, that's the thing that can definitely open this game up for the Cleveland Browns. Um, you know, keep the ground attack going. Nick Chubb had like 180 rushing yards and three touchdowns last week. So, you know, as I said on the bottom here, which offensive line plays better? That definitely goes into how Nick Chubb plays, obviously. Um, maybe Odell Beckham has a bounce back in this one. I believe Odell had a touchdown or two touchdowns last year when he played um, against San Fran on a Monday night game. Um, when he was a part of the Giants. I don't know if it was. A, I think it was a Monday night game. The Giants were at the San Francisco 49ers on a Monday night. He scored a couple of touchdowns in that one. So we'll see if he does it again this year. He's coming off a disappointing game. But still the Browns won. So it's 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 all good for him. Um, I think that's it for this game. Now, I do pick the Browns to win. I'm not overly confident in it. But I liked what I saw from them last week. Um, maybe it's recency bias because I haven't seen haven't seen the Niners play in a couple of weeks, so I don't know. I, I could be wrong about this one, but we'll see. Uh, that'll do it for this video. I hope you guys stuck to the end. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know some of your favorite game picks this week and some picks you're confident in and stuff like that, some spreads you like and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll talk to you guys next week.